Hey friends, welcome on back. Hopefully it's a little more stable now. I was able to switch over to the hardware encoding um, instead of the software encoding. I don't know, sometimes OBS gets a little weird with uh, those settings. So I think it'll be running a little bit better now. I think it's a little bit more stable. We'll see. Oh, this window manager this is the worst. I don't even know what this is. Like, and it just sucks up resources. But I don't think, I think if I kill it, bad stuff happens. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Probably don't want to try that in the middle and see what if it crashes, but it's like it shouldn't take up that many resources just to manage windows, right? I'll show you end it. Oh, it'll become windows become unstable and shut down. No, let's cancel that anyway then. Alright, I guess that's an important process. Sad. I've got the uh sad Batman emote here. I love this one. It's from Gotham Chess, one of the, the popular chess streamers out there. You guys are awesome. Okay. So, should we get back to uh, what we were doing here? So, one other cool function in the math library we want to look at is math.random. So, let's do a random number. Uh, how about 1 to 10? To do that, you say math.random. Now, what math.random gives you, let's see if we can tell it, have it tell us here again, random, is a value with a positive sign, greater than or equal to zero, and less than one. And again, it's pseudo-random, it's not entirely random, so um, if, if you know what it's doing behind the scenes, you can actually predict the value it's going to generate. So it's not ideal, um, definitely not cryptographically secure, and definitely don't use this for casino games. I've got a fun story about that in a minute. Well, math.random will give you from 0 to not quite 1. So if I want a number 1 to 10, if I multiply by 10, I'm going to get 0 through 9. Right? So then if I add 1, I'll get 1 to 10. And then I want this as an integer value. Right? Or I, I want it... Um, right? Um, sorry. What's the what's my, what's what I'm looking for? Um, I want it as a whole number. Right? So right, math.random is a double... So multiply by 10 will get me um, just a number with a decimal place still. So adding one, if I want to get rid of the decimal places, we could either round it or we could floor it. Uh, we got lots of options here. So probably the easy one is um, I think rounding might actually kind of mess up some of the, the randomness of it here because then you'll get less numbers going to 1 than you would going to 2. So I think you want math up. Floor, I think, is the right way. So floor is the opposite of ceiling. Floor will round down to the nearest whole number. Right, because if you think about all the different random numbers we could get here. Let me just kind of uh, sketch these out for a second. Let's see if I can get a document here. Right, so we said random will give us between 0, 0.0 and, so it's Greater, less than or equal to 0, 0.0, my value, less than 1.0. Right, so it could be 0 0.001, it could be 0 0.002, right, whatever, all the way up, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So we're taking that value, right, now let's do all these as 0, 0.1, right, 0, 0.1, 0, 0.2, 0, 0.3, 0, 0.4, on and on and on. And then we said let's multiply by 10. Right, so this then times 10, just move the decimal place over, I'd still have, I'd have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, but anything that was 0.5 and up, then, if we round, would become 2, because we've added 1, so really it's 1 point, 1 point, 1 point, sorry, 1.5 would round up to 2, so we're only going to get a smaller set of values that would become a 1, and you get more values that would become a 2, so that's problematic, right, so what we want is that the floored rounding, so that everything will round down, to the next nearest number, right? And I think that'll give us the best result. That sounds right. So we'll do we'll do floor. We'll try that. Okay. So this is um, math dot random random times the max value plus one, right? To get one to the max value. Okay, does that make sense? What we're doing here with that little bit of arithmetic. So multiply by the max, because it, math random is never 1, so we'll never get the max value. 
but we can get really close to it, and then we'll add one, and then we'll do the floor to round everything down. So, like 0 0.99999, if that was our random value, right, 0 0.99999 times 10, right, it's going to be 9.999999, but then we're going to add one to it, so it'd be 10.999999, and we just need to floor everything down. Right, so if you, if you look at the way that that would distribute here, right, so anything that is between 1 and 1.999, right, would become a 1 with that floored here. And that's the range, because it could be 0, right? So with our math random, we could get 0. So 0 times 10 is going to be 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So we, we still have this the exact same range for every value then. So 2 through 2.999, right, it was the same, and we could, we would never get exactly 10, because there is no 1, but we would get a 9 through 9.99999, right, to floor that one. So that, that should work out nicely for us. So doing the floored is better than rounding. We don't actually care too much for the math, um, and it's not cryptographic, cryptographically secure anyway, but, um, okay, so random values here. So if we do a random number, Give it a run, now we get 6. Now if I run it again, now it is 3. And I run it again, now it's 2. I run it again, now it's 7. I run it again, now it's 2. Right, so it seems like it's a random number, but there's this really cool article around um, random number hacking lot machines. Yep. So this one, that was a Wired article. I think I already shared it. Yeah. So... Uh, so Russian engineers figured out a way to cheat these slot machines that in the way that they would generate the the winning values here as the the images would spin on the screen it used that exact same random number generator to say okay put a random image up 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 as it did to say here's the winning numbers so what they're able to do is they could go and film it here so he would just hold his iPhone really close to the screen come back a little bit later, and then he would have a much better chance of winning because they had figured out what that random number generation sequence was. They were to figure out when he should try and hit the button to possibly win. Again, it wasn't perfect, but he made more money off of the slot machines than he should have. Right? Casinos are designed to take your money. If casinos gave away more money than they took from people, they wouldn't be in business. Right? They're, they're designed to take your money. That's literally what they do. So if you're winning money at the casino, something's going wrong for them. Excuse me. So um, for, for their game, so I, I should say for poker, you're playing against other players. The casino doesn't care because they're taking the rake, right? They, they get paid the more people play just by taking a portion of the, the pot here. But for games that the casino is the house, right, where you get to take their money rather than poker where you take other people's money or lose your money to other people, um, they, they've got guaranteed odds. That's why it works like that. So, this is interesting. I posted it in the Discord. Um, super cool article. Um, and why we should make sure we use cryptographically secure random number generators even in things like slot machines. Um, okay. Alright. So that was our random. So should we talk about the lab? I think we've gone probably long enough today. We'll wrap up the chapter on um, Monday. So let me make sure this is all committed here. So here's chapter three, part one. We'll commit that and push. All right, so what we're going to do for lab is we're going to um, play a little game here. So we're going to ask the user if they want to play a game. Okay, and if or um, while their answer is yes, Yes. Keep looping. So we're going to start a loop here, right? If they answered yes, great. What that means then is when this is done, ask if they want to play again, right? This one uh, is associated with this loop. So ask if they want to play again is whatever that answer was going to be, right? If there was yes, we start the loop. If it wasn't yes, the loop never runs, right? A while loop has to be true for it to run. So at the end of the loop, we're going to say, hey, do you want to play again? And then we'll go check. Is it still yes or why? Right? Sure, let's run. If it's not, let's don't run. Let's not run. That sort of thing. Does that make sense? So for, for a, a quick little loop there, um, 
then what we're going to do is, if they're playing the game, we'll ask them um, how high of a number they want to guess. And then we'll generate a random number, one through that number. And then we're going to start counting the number of guesses it takes them to guess the number. So then there's another loop. So we're going to loop as long as their guess is not correct. Right, so ask them to guess, right? To guess. And then as long as their guess is not correct, right, inside of this loop, then we're going to tell them um, too high or too low, and then have them guess again. Right, so eventually their guess will become correct, and this loop will stop. Yeah, right, so this is make sure you are counting the number of guesses. So we're going to have a loop inside of another loop here. So we're just going to tell them, hey, if your guess was less than the, the number to guess, we told you too low, it was greater than the number to guess, right? So this was if the guess was less than the, num the number, too low, right? Else, right? Too high? Right? And anyway, you want to kind of work this, right? Because you're only inside the loop if your guess was wrong. So it's either too high or too low. You can't be correct if you're inside this loop. Uh, but you got options, right? E either direct, either way you want to work this here um, is fine. This is the next lab, SP Java. This is the lab for today. So we got a lab every every day, every Monday, every Wednesday. We got a lab. So lots of practice writing code because I'm thoroughly convinced. The only way to get better at writing code is by writing code. Um, you can read about it all you want, you can watch it all you want, but until you start writing it yourself, um, you're not going to get any better. Okay, so let me commit this. This is our um, lab pseudocode. Again, kind of like code. It's not really code, but like we're thinking through step by step by step what we want to kind of accomplish here. Let me commit and push that, and I'll make a new assignment for you. Give me a second to get that link here. I want the classroom GitHub link. And I go to assignments. This will be lab four. Okay, so let's do a new assignment for lab four. We make a new lab four here. Lab four. We want the Java template. And we want feedback pull requests. There we go. All right, here's our link. So lab four. So it's lab four. Due in a week from today. So it'll be uh, February 2nd. Look at that. We're looking at February already, folks. That's awesome. We're getting getting into this here. Um, 10 points for lab four in the gradebook. All sorts of buttons to click here. This is all sorts of fun. Not the final project. How about labs? There we go. Um, in the labs category of the text submission, submit the feedback pull request URL. Create a number guessing game. C, and then let's go view this on GitHub here, and I'll go link to that. This was in chapter three, right in here. And I'm going to grab all these line numbers for you here. And copy that link. Okay. All right. Awesome. So we got that lab available there. Uh, so we got the rest of the week, uh, rest of the day. We can get working on lab three if you haven't finished that one yet. That one's due Monday. Um, we got this lab coming up. We also have the project coming up. Uh, this is going to be due before you know it. I know February 7th looks like it's a ways away still, uh, but you want to start that one early. Um, especially because that's due. Oh, that. Oh my calendar. Oh, why was the calendar so obnoxious? That's all right. Um, February second. Let me pull up. A, let me just look at this calendar here because that showed all my messages. That was annoying. Windows. Good job. 
it's fine. Um, February 7th is a Monday, so please don't wait until February 4th, 5th, and 6th to start asking me questions about it. I am very limited in how much time I can um, devote to helping you folks over the weekend. I've got lots of things going on around the house with all the kids, so um, please start early so you can ask me questions. Happy to get you unstuck. Again, my general rule of thumb is, um, you know, spend about half an hour or so, maybe an hour, um, probably not for this class because it's your first programming class, so no more than half an hour looking at something, trying to figure out what's wrong with it. I'm going to reach out and ask. Um, you know, a little less is okay too, but like, more than a minute. <laughs> um, you know, you, you got to try a little while um, to reach out and help. Usually it's, it's real quick for me to get you unstuck. You can do a screen share, you can send me some screenshots of the errors you're getting, and I can get you pointed in the right direction and get you moving again. So um, do, do feel free to reach out. I'm happy to get you unstuck if you're stuck somewhere on these projects. So that, that's the goal, okay? So do start early on that. And don't forget we have our first group tutor session today, 12 to 1. Oh, yeah. Um, I... It, it might depend, um, like if you're actually employed as a junior dev, um, I definitely wouldn't spend multiple hours on anything without reaching out, because at that point you're just wasting time. Like if you're making progress, yeah, if you're learning from it, yeah, but like if you're just totally stuck dead in the water, don't understand, like it just, nothing is progressing for more than an hour, you've, you're wasting time. Um, and that's why we have senior devs uh, and mentors and things like that. You know, generally they can get you pointed in the right direction to get you more productive again. And, and, you know, expectations are a little different for junior devs and, and new developers that, we, you know, we know you're going to run into things that you get stuck on, and that's okay, because nobody knows everything. Um, SPJ, if you get stuck on something, let me know. Um, I'm, you know, generally, I would walk around in person in the lab and, and help everyone kind of get pointed in the right directions, um, you know, figure out what was wrong with your syntax. So uh, feel free to reach out. Happy to get you unstuck, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to walk through labs, um, you know, uh, again, we got the pseudocode, we're going to try and figure out what the syntax is for that, and we're kind of doing that translating portion here, saying, okay, can I take some logic and turn it into code here, but if, if you need help on any of the labs, feel free to reach out, um, I, I'm super helpful when it comes to labs, um, I don't want to say less helpful when it comes to projects, but like, I'm not going to like, give you answers for projects, where I probably will give you answers for labs if you're stuck. Um... I mean, e either way, SP Java. if you want to wait until tomorrow and see if that helps, or you want know, to ask me a couple questions tonight, that's fine too. Uh, no problem. So I got, uh, later this afternoon, I have my office hours. Uh, happy to meet with you folks as well. Um, just let me know. Yeah, it, we could just have a five-minute chat. It doesn't need to be like an hour-long meeting or anything. It can just be five minutes. That's, that's no problem at all. So whatever is going to work out well for you. Uh, happy to get you get you going on these things. So again, it, we, we would have been in person walking around the lab, so we just have to kind of deal with the screen sharing on Discord or Zoom um, for the, the labs here. Uh, yeah, t uh, Mr. Tim keeps attendance uh, for the, the Group Tutor SI sessions. Yeah, So I get those automatically from him because he has to fill out reports for the Academic Support Center. Uh, but if you do individual tutoring, uh, like with Rika or someone, I just need them to shoot me a message that you went that week. And then I'll, I'll add those on as your bonus points for the quizzes. So I don't actually add them to the individual weekly quizzes. I, at the end of the semester, I have a single like bonus point category in quizzes that just gives you bonus points. Excuse me. That's kind of how that works. Okay. All right, folks. So let's uh, let's end the stream here. I'll, I'll pu push these out to YouTube. Don't forget, you can go find them here uh, in the content lecture archive, or if you go subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can find them there as well. Um, so I'll make sure I keep all those links out here for you. And uh, you can always come back and, and watch them again if, you, if you'd like to, okay? All right, if you want to meet up, uh, shoot me a message on Discord or email me. I'm happy to fire up Zoom. You can hop on there or just do screen sharing in Discord, whatever works. Uh, so take a look here in content course information. There's the SI document. has all the links for the Zoom sessions. There are different links for Tuesday and Wednesday, if I recall. Um, so make sure you're, you're finding the correct link there. Um, so you can find it here in the content section. Yep. Yeah, or I think I linked to it from the announcements as well. If you like to find stuff from announcements, the SI doc should be linked out here. Yep, so you can go find it right here for those sessions, okay? All right, awesome. So we'll call it a day. Uh, we got a couple things to be working on. Um, don't forget the Chapter 2 quiz is also coming up um, by next week. Okay, worked in announcements, fantastic. And uh, we'll go from there, okay? It didn't work when you click the link. 
That's super weird. Let me try it real quick. Into. Okay, it worked for me. It opened up the, the document right away. Can you just get to it from the content section? Like if you just go to course information here and um, can you open it up here? I wonder if I made the link wrong. Like it, it should just. I don't know. D2L is a little weird sometimes with the links. Let me try editing that real quick. D2L gets a little funny. So let's make that link to content. Course information, SciDoc. Okay, I updated it. Uh, you can give that a try. Let me know if that works any better for you. Or if not, it should just be in, <clears throat> excuse me, in content there as well. Okay, cool, from content worked. All right, I'm sorry about that link. That's super weird. Not sure what happened there then. All right, cool. Thanks, folks. I'll end this and uh, just shoot me messages. Uh, I'm happy to, to walk around and do some screen sharing, virtually walk around, and we'll go from there. All right, everybody, take care.